Good morning. One of the questions I get asked a lot is about irrigating lucerne. So some farmers have irrigation available to them in a, a lucerne stand, but the mechanics of how to actually irrigate are quite different for an, irrigation, an irrigated lucerne stand than they are for a grass pasture. So we're looking at a um, paddock at, at um, Lincoln University and it's been grazed about 10 days ago and you can see there are starting to be some shoots recovering. And over here we can see that we've topped the paddock after grazing and so there's a little bit of stem around but mostly the animals have eaten most of the lucerne that was available. At the moment this stand doesn't really require much irrigation. The leaf area is not covering much of the ground so when a, when a plant is using water it actually has to have leaf area covering the whole ground to be maximising the amount of water use. So at the moment we've got less than 5% ground cover here so there isn't much call for putting water on this lucerne at the moment. All we would do if we put water on here is actually germinate any weeds that are sitting in the soil and create a, a nice opportunity for those weeds to get, um, get growing and become competitive with the lucerne plant. So what we've got is no need to irrigate right now when many people actually do. They put water onto a lucerne stand immediately after cutting it for hay or immediately after grazing. We have to understand the difference between evaporation and transpiration to understand when we should irrigate a lucerne stand. So if I read in the paper every day I can see the evapotranspiration rate that the Met Service says will have happened um, yesterday. So on a hot Norwest day here in Canterbury, we could lose seven mils of potential evapotranspiration. So that's seven mils of water coming out of the soil um, for every, on every day. But when there is no plant cover, actually that, that water loss is zero. So at the moment, this soil is actually not losing any water with about 5% ground cover. In fact, in this area here, it's more like 1% ground cover. We've only got 1% of that seven mils disappearing. If I put water on here, then I change from having the transpiration through the plant and I'll get a lot of soil evaporation. So I could wet the soil up. And as I wet that soil up, then the sun's energy is going to evaporate it from the soil surface. And actually what's going to happen then is I've just lost the water from the system that water has disappeared as um, soil evaporation rather than transpiration. So the amount of water that we're going to lose on a day is a combination of evaporation and transpiration and therefore is evapotranspiration. But the, the physics and the daily atmospheric conditions dictate what that's going to be, not the plant growth. This is the same paddock that we were looking at just previously, but here we've, we actually had grazed this about five days earlier than the, the previous half of the paddock. So we split the paddock in half when we were grazing it, and this is perfect and ideal to be irrigated right now. You can see there is enough moisture in the soil profile to have allowed the new shoots to have grown and these first leaves to actually expand. So we've still probably only got about 15% ground cover here, but these plants are very much more ready to accept any soil moisture that we put onto it. So we've started irrigating this today. You can hear a squeak in the background of the irrigator going round, and it's going to allow this um, lucerne stand to grow very rapidly from here and allow those shoots and leaves to expand very quickly with the soil moisture that's put on. In terms of giving the lucerne a drink, what we actually want to do is give it a large drink and not very often. So we're going to try and put on about 80 mils of water over a couple of days, two to three days on this lucerne stand, and that'll give it a big drink, and the lucerne will start using the water that's at the soil surface first, so it's clearly using water deep down in the profile to, to recover from grazing at the moment, but it'll stop using that water, and it'll start using the water that goes on the surface, because it's closest to where the plant needs it, and it'll dry that surface out quickly. So two things happen then, it's using the water here, it's drying it out, um, the sun will also dry some of this out. The weeds may still germinate in here, but they're also going to be outcompeted by the lucerne because it's got some canopy here, so it will shade those. Compared with the previous paddock, where if we put water on, we actually give the weeds about two weeks of growth before the lucerne starts to be competitive. So this is the perfect time to be putting irrigation on. About 80 mils 
of irrigation would last us for two weeks at the moment. So assuming we have about five mils of evapotranspiration a day occurring, five mils times 14 days would be 70 mils. We're going to lose some of that uh, moisture from soil evaporation and some of it's going to go through the plant. So in two weeks time, we're gonna to wanna to come back in and put on about another 80 mils of moisture, which will then finish this crop off for its rotation um, over the next 35, you know, um, four or five weeks that it's going to grow. And the key thing about that is it's been a large amount of irrigation in a short period of time. In comparison with a grass pasture where a lot of Canterbury has sent a pivot irrigators, they put three to five mils of irrigation on and they try and do that every, every two to three days. Really, all you're doing is losing a large proportion of that water to soil evaporation, particularly if there isn't ground cover as we're seeing here with this lucerne stand.